I will pick up where we left off in the previous video by mentioning that after creating our curve, we would naturally want to go into edit points mode to make adjustments to our curve. Once you are in edit points mode, you can select any point or group of points and change it to a Bezier point as well. You can click and drag to multi-select points. Hold down the shift key, come over here and select those as well. You can control click to deselect those. You can also select amongst these icons in order to merge or split points. I'm going to go back to the spline creation mode. I'll start here at the bottom lip. And again, I'll just continue clicking. I'm not going to worry about the skin folds. These are something I would work on during the sculpting phase. I'll hit escape. And I think that's okay for now. I may now want to come over to the curves tree and rename the different curves accordingly. You can always hide them if you need. I'll double click and change it. Select that one, double click. Now let's go to the swept in generator tool. If we don't already have it selected, we will go to our tool options panel and for our guide curve one, I'll click pick and select this topmost curve. I'll pick the second one. For the profile curve, I will pick that as well. 3D Coat will automatically generate this preview mesh. And I can edit the number of spans around that shape. At this point, I think I'm happy with overall number, but I can always go back and make some edits here in the head region. This is where I would need to make sure that I step out of curves mode by selecting a standard draw mode. The reason is if I'm still in curves mode and I click 3D Coat thinks that I'm still trying to create curves or edit curves. In this case, I am not. I can double click anywhere along this pink or red line and create a new loop. Once you've created it, you see this little point, you can slide that to readjust its position. So again, I'll double click and create another one there. Maybe another one there as well. If we notice any problems in this preview mesh, it's probably related to your curve where the points may be too close together. You can go back to close spline, go into the edit points mode, edit that point, and it should automatically update as you make those edits. But make sure to go back to a regular draw mode when you're done. So now I want to add another one here. Again, I can slide it as I need. The add loop direction line will allow me to change the flow or the angle of the cross-sectional loops. As you can see, the flow is leaning toward the front and I can restrict it by adding a few lines. Now, what I can do is go to the bottom or the top. So I redirect the flow and you can see how it's stopping until it gets to this one. And with this one, I can actually redirect it. I can maybe add one here. That will suffice for all the directional lines. I'm now going to just tweak the position of some of these edge loops. Okay, so I'll double tap here to create another one. You can cap the ends of your mesh or the start. We can extract a spline by clicking on that and then clicking on a loop in order to generate a spline from it. I'll go up here to the navigation bar. I can click on this cube icon, which will take me out of orthographic mode and put me in perspective mode. And now I have this curve. But once I can go to curves, edit, and click on that point, shift click that one. Okay. And the same thing with these two. Select that one. And then this one. 
Now I can go to the transform tool. If we want to scale those, we can see how that's allowing us to add a little bit more shape. I can hit escape to drop that gizmo and I can just click out in open 3D space to drop that selection or hit escape. So now we have already created our base shape. We want to go ahead and hit apply mesh. That's created a, a poly group here for us. Um, if I want, I can hide all those curves. And then I'm ready to step out and use other tools. Let's go to select mode. Go to regular draw mode. Uh, again, because we don't need to work with curves right now. At this point in time. I guess this is a point where we would go to orthographic view by hitting the 5 key again or this cube icon. And I'll go to a camera view. If I've not already mentioned this, you can store camera views by hitting control up arrow. So for example, that original view that we were in, I already stored that by hitting control up arrow. When you save your file, 3D Coat will store that camera view so you can always access it. You can continue creating any number of camera shortcuts and you can cycle between them by holding down the control key and hitting the left arrow key to go to the previous or control key right arrow to go to the next. So I'll hit control left arrow to go to the previous camera shortcut. Let's go ahead and stop the video here and we will pick up in the next one using the spine tool in order to create the horns. Stay tuned and we'll see you then.